Hi, it's Rich from Low and Design. Dragonflies and giraffes help me make the pattern on these boxes. Let's see how. These boxes are made based on a pattern called a Voronoi tessellation, characterized by a guy named Georgi Voronoi. It's a pattern found in nature. It's a mathematical pattern that's used for quite a few things uh, in statistical analysis and uh, finding the best place to put a new Starbucks. It's just really, really interesting to me how it evolves as it gets more and more complex. So I built a whole series of boxes to sort of show the complexity going from one, two, three, four uh, cubby openings in the boxes. I wanted to show you how I came up with the idea for this Verona Evolution project. This is RhinoCAD, and this is Grasshopper, which is a way of programming RhinoCAD. I have a slider here. When I move it, it changes the number of random points on the screen, and then it generates a Verona pattern using those points. And you can see how the pattern evolves just by moving this slider back and forth. I did this, and I was, I was watching how the pattern evolved, and I found it really, really intriguing how you start with one line, then as you add another, you can see the original parts of the line there, and you're adding on the new things, and the, the box just grows in complexity as you do that. And I thought that was really, really interesting. And I really like the way that the pattern that you see here is used in nature, in the wings of a dragonfly, and on the, the spots on the fur of a giraffe. And so I thought, I would really like to build a whole bunch of boxes that show how this evolution occurs and do it in wood and and it just seems really intriguing to me and so we built a whole bunch of boxes all right here we go All right, I'm going to get a piece in here. So I'll just do a rough measurement. I'm going to say, so I leave a little bit extra, like nine and a half. So I'll go and we'll cut a piece nine and a half, and then we'll worry about the angles at the ends. Now I want to fit it at each end, and we have a little bit of an angle here. I'm using this to keep the pieces vertical. And just come in here, measure that angle. That's about 93 and a half, 94. So I'm coming in at 94 is almost flat on. So I can see it's tilted this way and I see my angle there. So I'm just going to cut right at the edge of this piece of wood. So it's almost an invisible angle. And that'll fit in there. And now I'm left with the puzzle of how to fit these three pieces together here. And what I think I'll do is I'll make a little 
V-shaped cut the very top of this. And looking at it, just make a little mark here. And similar, this one's right on the corner, it should work good. Sort of like that, sort of like that. We'll measure the angles now. lining this edge up here and I'm just going by eye so that that lines up on that cut and that is 99 coming in like that and the other side is there now it says 119 but if I click the reverse button it tells me it's 60 point, oh, 60 point 60.8, anyway, 61. So I know my two angles, and I'll try to make a little, a little V-shaped cut in there. It doesn't have to be absolutely accurate. Trim it just a little bit off, especially on this side here. We just cut, so we'll just take a little bit off of there. So there's a piece that will fit in there pretty tightly, and it's matching up over here on this end. So you can see, there's a nice a nice tight joint here and here and here. You know. All these things will sort of squeeze together. The magic is that it's all hidden by the face frame. So, pretty good. Ready to go. They will. But it's a thing I check when I'm assembling it as well, just so that I can get this to fit in there. four shirts while well, gluing things up just in this one project because I never think I'm going to get myself covered in glue and I do This is a Milwaukee 2540 pin nailer and battery powered, 12 volt. I love it. I use it all the time. Never jams. It's a great tool. I want to get a nice tight fit all along the sides and sometimes it would blow out a bit on the sides. So clamps here just hold in the middle of the sides so that they can be nailed properly. One coming out there. I didn't get too many of these blowouts, but when I did, they were pretty easy to pull out with pliers. Or I used an old chisel and would just sort of chop them off with the chisel. It's like a sliver you just can't get. 
Yeah, well, we'll get it with a uh, we'll go in with a cutting disc and just cut the end of it off. And it's a lot easier to get the little extra bits of glue in there. And I mark the top of each piece of wood that will be in there so I know I'm getting it centered. And that is what helps in the future when I'll be lining up. There's like a groove here that I want that to line up. So I want when I'm putting in the pieces, I have to make sure that things aren't off, off kilter in any way. The assembly of these was really kind of like a puzzle to figure out the order to assemble them and how to nail them in, where to put the glue. You don't want a whole lot of glue squeeze out how much glue to put. So it was pretty interesting. In the end, I could do probably about a box and a half a day, but really overall, it was probably about a box a day. is where fitting the face frames is getting tricky. More and more pieces you have glued in. In the end, we went over the grooves with a, a half inch wide belt sander, and that gave us enough space to, to get things, to squeeze things together. finished prep for these was a lot of work with, between myself and Brooke. We wanted to get a finish that looked almost plastic, glossy. So a lot of sanding, a lot of prep. This is just rounding over with a eighth inch radius just to make the face frame look nice. Brooke did a lot of very fine finishing work on these things, going over all 12 of these boxes, just in great detail. The whole studio was actually yellow when we were painting these things. And, uh, it was so nice to see the, the layers and layers of color, the nice finishing work we did all come together into a nice, shiny, plastic, pure finish. This is that half inch belt grinder that uh, Brooke was using to clean up those 
slots and make them a little bit wider, give us a bit more room to fit the frames together. And also taking some of the paint out of there so that the, when the, the glue would have something better to stick to. It was really tricky putting these things all together. We had, uh, we had to make sure they were all clamped down and then we had to find ways to clamp them in the center. Sometimes we would put a call across and just pull the whole thing down that way. There's Brooke is being incredibly detail oriented on every little bit of glue squeeze out and everything. But the finish ended up being fantastic on these things. We made 12 little tables to hold these uh, Veroni boxes. It's two pieces of three quarter inch plywood and I just cut them on the CNC and we had some locating pins to assemble them. And then we bought some cast iron table bases uh, to put each one of them on. It came out really nice. 